So looking at types of studies is going to be important for us because depending on what type of study we have, we can determine the relationship. So typically if we have an observational study, all we can really determine is if there is a correlation. That means that the two things are related, but we're not really sure how. In a controlled study, it's a lot more likely that we can see a cause and effect. That's because we have more control over variables and we can definitely see that this causes that, not that they're just related. So remember, if two things are related, but maybe one doesn't cause the other, there might be a lurking or a confounding variable. So for the first one, a doctor wishes to know the long-term effects of bare aspirin has, a heart, has on heart attack survivors. She reviews her files and records the health records of previous patients who took bare aspirin and compares them to those who did not. So what we want to know, is this a control or an observational study? So let's think of this, and by thinking of it, this is going to be the explain part. Did the doctor ask her patients to do anything? No, in fact, what she did is that she reviewed those files. So in reviewing, she is observing previous data. So because she's reviewing, she is going to be observing the past. So this is going to be an observational study. So she may well see that there's a correlation between health and taking bare aspirin after a heart attack, but she can't be sure unless she can control all the other variables. Next one, we wish to see how many people step away when we get too close. I love this. We walk up to strangers and slowly increase our distance by one step every 15 seconds until they shift away. So we're being total creepers. We then record approximately how far away the individuals, um, how far away from the individuals we were. So is this a control or an observational study? So this is going to be an observational study. The reason is, is that we're not telling these people who are part of our study what to do. Even though we're controlling our own behavior, we have no control over their behavior. So this is going to be an observational study as well. Next, we wish to test if driving a red car will affect a person's speeding habits while driving. We randomly choose 50 people and assign 25 of them to red cars and the other 25 blue cars. The vehicles are identical makes and models and only differ in color. We track their driving habits using a device that plugs in under the steering wheel. So is this a control or an observational study? This is going to be a control study. The key words that we see that tells us it's a control study or an experiment is another word for it, is one, we randomly chose people. So randomness implies that it's going to be a control study, but not always. Okay, the other thing is that we assigned people to groups. So we assigned people to red cars and then we assigned people to blue cars. So because this is random and then we're also doing assignments, this is going to be a control study. There's going to be different things that make a control study really good. So for example, if I tell people that I wanna see if they speed or not, that's going to influence them. Really what I wanna know is does the pure color of the car influence them? So maybe I don't tell them what the study is about. That would be called blinding. Next, this is also a true story, <laughs> I want to know if using egg whites and apple cider vinegar will make my hair shinier than conditioner. After a week, I noticed that my hair is indeed shinier and smells like salad dressing. Is this a controlled or an observational study? Explain. Well, here's the deal, is that this is actually neither. What this is, is this is called anecdotal. So what anecdotal is, is it's one person's experience and their interpretation of that experience. Now, if you gather enough anecdotes, then what you might have is an observational study. But in this case, it would be neither.